Howdy! If you're watching this video, that means you want to learn how to make mods. Like by changing the code of the game, by replacing textures, animations, objects in the game, etc. I mean, the main purpose of any mod is to change the game in some way, usually to make it more fun and enjoyable to play. But sometimes mods are used, well, let's say for a various of reasons, including things I am not allowed to show here on YouTube. And this video is not a about installing mods, we're going to discuss how to make mods, how you can start making your own mods for games from scratch, like literally. 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 <laughs> Even if you're not a programmer or you are scared of a 3D modeling software, trust me, you still can make awesome mods. This video is going to be pretty much an introductional guide. I'll explain some of the basics of Unreal Engine and we're going to make some real mods along the way. Hopefully, after watching it, you'll learn how to make your own mods for Unreal Engine games. Also, it's not going to be a theory-based video as I am a modder myself. Thus, I'll show you the most modern modding tools available. Nothing outdated. Oh, and before we begin, make sure to smash the like button. On this channel I make videos about programming, game development and neural networks. If you're into this kind of stuff, feel free to subscribe as well. And with that being said, let's start with the basics. Ok, I am sure you all know what is an Unreal Engine. Games like Oblivion Remastered, Stalker 2, Pale World, Fortnite, Into the Radius, Dead Island 2, etc. All of them are made with Unreal Engine. The reason it matters is because there are tons of modding tools made specifically for Unreal. Thus, they can be used to make mods literally for any Unreal Engine game. Although it can be tricky. The reason why is because all of them are actually made with a different versions of Unreal Engine. You may ask, but why the engine version matters? Well, you see, Unreal's binary files are a painful history of micro changes that leads to a tons of branching paths that need to be supported. Thus, modding tools need to be updated each time the engine updates. And the two most popular and well-known versions today are Unreal Engine 4 and Unreal Engine 5. These are called a major version. And if a game is made with, say, Unreal Engine 427, it's going to be a major version 4 and a minor version 27. Any other digits doesn't matter. And you can find what UE version game is made with by simply googling. Alternatively, you can open properties of the game executable and it will be listed in the details tab. Like, there are tons of ways to identify Unreal Engine version the game is made with. Ok, next thing you wanna know is that usually mods for Unreal Engine games are replacing something. It could be a texture, a mesh, a material, an audio file, a whole map, some animations or a data table or a blueprint. And unlike uh, Windows uh, file system where you can have a separate file extensions for all those file types, like PNG is a picture and WAV is an audio file, Unreal Engine stores them all in a single file with uAsset extension, no matter the type of a game asset. Not gonna lie, actually it's a bit more complicated, and when it comes to editing UE game files, most likely you're going to work with file extensions like uAsset, uEXP, uBulk, Pack, uTalk and uCAS. The last three extensions, uh, Pack, uTalk and and UCAS are actually containers used to store game assets. Think of it as a zip archive. Pack is an old container used mostly in Unreal Engine 4 games, and UTOK UCAS is a modern way used in Unreal Engine 5. And the actual data is usually stored within uAsset, uEXP and uBulk files. For example, if it's a data table, most likely it's going to be stored in a single uAsset file. Textures, meshes and materials are usually stored as uAsset and uEXP files. uEXP file in this case used to store bulk data that doesn't fit inside the uAsset file. In some cases, uBulk files are also involved uh, to store large data. And some game assets uh, can actually use 
all of these file types at the same time. Additionally, Unreal's game files can be encrypted with a special AES key. Without it, you cannot read or edit any of them. Again, think of it as a password for a zip archive. However, there is an easy way to get the keys, so it's definitely not going to stop us from making mods. Furthermore, many Unreal games doesn't even use any type of encryption at all. I guess they understand the benefits of modding after all. Ok, so now when you understand the basic file types of Unreal Engine, the very first thing you wanna do is to explore and unpack some of the game files. For this, you can use different tools, but the two most common are Fmodel and Umodel. With these tools you can view the game's file hierarchy in order to find the required game assets. Usually it's quite an easy process, as folders and files are named accordingly to what they are used for. Like, for example, weapons uh, will be stored inside weapons folder and game objects uh, could be inside props folder. You get the idea. Also, be sure to understand the difference between saving and exporting a game asset. Those are two different actions. By saving an asset, you preserve the original file structure. So if you're saving a textures you asset file, for example, you're gonna get the same you asset file saved. But if you export it instead, then you're going to get the contents inside of it. For textures, it could be files like PNG or TGA. Although the naming of those sections are kind of vice versa in F model. Here you export if you want the raw data and save if you want the underlying contents. So keep that in mind. And this way you can export textures, audio, meshes and animations in order to edit them in any software you want. Like, you can use Blender 3D to edit textures and meshes. For example, here I have exported a knife 3D model from Into the Radius game. And since Unreal Engine uses PSK and PSA file formats to work with meshes and animations, we need to install a special Blender plugin that lets us import those models. I'll leave a link to that plugin in the description below. Now, I can work with this model inside Blender, change it in any way, retexture or simply replace it with any other knife I want. Let's say I want to replace it with M9 Bayonet Blue Blood from Standoff. And probably the two most important things here you should to understand is that you need to preserve the bone structure and the scaling. For some reason models exported from Unreal Engine have a scale of 100, meaning they are 100 times bigger than it should be, so don't forget to downscale them before importing back to Unreal Engine. And yes, for some mods you actually need an Unreal Engine installed on your PC as well, specifically the particular version that the game uses. So for Into the Radius knife example, I had to install Unreal Engine 427, because Into the Radius was made with Unreal Engine 427. The reason why is because you need the engine to cook your content. In other words, convert your textures and models back into your asset file. As far as I know, it can be done pretty much only with the engine itself. Of course, it includes some shenanigans with the materials, etc., but it's usually explained in any dedicated Unreal Engine tutorials. Ok, next up we have data tables and blueprints. If you want to edit them, you need to use tools like UAsset GUI. Here you can also save a data table as a JSON file and then edit it in any text editor. And after you're done, convert it back to UAsset file, using the UAsset GUI itself. And here's another example from a game called The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners. I've used UAsset GUI to edit a flashlight blueprint. I I wanted to make it brighter, because the default flashlight kinda sucks in the game. I had to find a flashlight blueprint within a game files and then export it with fmodel, and then edit it with uasset GUI and by analyzing the file contents find the values I need to change. After that, the only thing left is to pack the mod. That's 
actually the last step. You can do it either by packing your mod with tools like Unreal Pack GUI or you can use Unreal Mod Unlock app to mod the game through loose files, which is sometimes considered a better practice but it takes a few additional steps for the players to install your mod this way. For obvious reasons I won't cover the process in this video, as it's already explained in a series by Illusory Software, the developer of Unreal Mod Unlock app. It contains 4 videos explaining all the basics of Unreal Mazin, so make sure to check it out, I'll leave a link in the description below. For now, the only thing left about Unreal Mazin we have to discuss is a scripting mods. You can use them to alter the game logic however you want. For example, I've made a mod called Better Sneak for Oblivion Remastered and it's a script mod that changes sneak mechanics in the game. One common way to make such mods is by using a tool called UE4SS. It lets you make mods both with Lua and C++ languages. Many, many great mods were made with UA4SS. What's also great is that it comes with number of dumpers. You can use them to dump function names, field types, paths, class names, etc. It will help you a lot to make your mods, because you will understand what functions to hook, uh, what data they expect and all the kind of stuff. Oh, and one more important thing about UAsset GUI related to UE4SS is that for some blueprints you actually need a special file with US map extension. It's a mapping file that helps UAsset GUI correctly interpret and edit the data structures inside a blueprint. And one way to get this file is by using US map dumper inside UE4SS. All you have to do is to run the game and press Ctrl plus numpad 6, that's the default hotkey. And in most cases it will automatically generate USMIP file that you can use inside UAsset GUI. However, sometimes it will fail, probably because of AOBs, but there is another way to get the mappings file you need. A GitHub repo made by, I think, the developer of USMAP Dumpe. Anyway, here you can find ready to use USMAP files for a number of Unreal Engine games. You can download them straight away and use them inside UAsset GUI. Also, make sure to check pull requests page in case you won't find the game you need in the list. It could could be just waiting for a PR approval. Okay, as you probably understand, it will take some time to get used to how things work. I mean, Unreal Engine Mazin pipeline can be complicated sometimes, but overall nothing is impossible. There is also a GitHub page where you can find literally every Unreal Mazin tools available. Make sure to check it out as well. Another useful GitHub page covers tons of tutorials for Unreal Mazin, and they even divide it by complexity level. Also, in order to learn how to unpack a it and repack your mods, it would be a good idea to watch a dedicated tutorials here on YouTube. And I can easily think of at least 5 to 7 videos that you should watch. Again, I'll leave all the links in the description below, so you can continue on your journey to Unreal Mazin and with the all basic knowledge you now understand, hopefully make your very first Unreal mod. That's pretty much how you make a mod for Unreal Engine games. Feel free to ask any questions in the comments below and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to your channel. And as always, have a great day!